Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. This is episode 40, I believe. I am your host, Christy. I live in the Denver area of Colorado with my husband, Ron, of almost 19 years. Our anniversary is one week away. And our daughters, Tatum, who is 12, and Delaney, who is 9, and our new rescue kitty, Lilu, who has taken to attacking our feet in the wee hours of the morning, while we're sleeping, with her claws, which go through our quilts and into our feet. So all of us, <laughs> except for Ron, for some reason she hasn't attacked him yet, um, but the girls and I all have kitty, kitten scratches on our feet. Um, and yeah, they're, it's, not, it's, it's not a pleasant way to wake up. It, it, it really, really isn't. But, we're hoping to break her of that habit. Uh, it happens after Ron gets up and goes to work. He gets up early uh, before the rest of us get, are awake, and um, and that, I guess, wakes up the cat enough to where she thinks that the rest of the house should be awake, too. And, um, you know. So, anyway. Um, okay, so yes. So I am your host, Christy. As I said, you can find me on Ravelry as christy Lael and on Instagram as christy Lael without the dash. The spellings for those are down in the description box below. And we also have a Relatively Crafty podcast group on Ravelry where we have knit-alongs and giveaways and chatter and an opportunity to show off the things that you have gotten or made or are excited about. And yeah, it's a great place to hang out, so you should come and check it out. We are currently having a cowl going on right now. It is our summer Soxtis cowl, which has been running from June 21st, which was the beginning of summer, to September 21st, which is the beginning of autumn. So, um, so you have a little bit over a week left, which um, you, I figure a person could get a pair of socks done in a week if they really focused on it. And we have a chatter thread and a, an FO thread, and I ask that you chatter a bunch in the chatter thread, but do not chatter at all in the FO thread. However, you can post your FOs also in the chatter thread so that people can talk about them. And then basically all you're doing is knitting socks. They can be any pattern, any yarn, knit them any way you want to, any size. Uh, Two adult socks counts as an entry, and four children's socks counts as an entry. And I ask that you put each entry in its own post in the FO thread. We do have some prizes, and I will go over the prizes today. I, I kind of went over them when I got them, but now I'll go over them again so you can see what they are and be have it all renewed in your head. So I have three basic prize packages, um, each having a skein of yarn and a project bag, and one will be for the FO thread, one will be for the chatter thread, and those will both be done through random number generator. And then I have a third that I'm just going to kind of award willy-nilly. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to do another RNG or if I'm going to just kind of go through and pick my favorite pair of socks and um, award it that way. I'm kind of leaning towards that. Since I've already got two RNG awards, I figure I can I can pick a favorite, right? You guys wouldn't mind that, would you? Um, so let's go ahead and, and go over those. So for the FO thread... I have this skein of yarn that was so generously donated by Carrie of the Creative Obsession. This is her aerial colorway in her lovely sock base, uh, which is an 80-20. And, um, and it's just, it's really gorgeous with oranges and blues and purples. And then I also have a generously donated project bag from Fat Girl Sewing, um, which is just absolutely gorgeous. It's a decent size, like a two skein project bag. Uh, be good for a small sweater or a shawl with these bees on it. And it is a zippered bag with um, lemon uh, fabric on the inside. There is also a little um, a little bag with some tea and a, uh, and a stitch marker in there, 
and it has this nice removable fob handle that you could use for the bag or you could put it on your keys. I personally love having a key fob. So that is So that is the um, uh, the FO thread prize. Then for the chatter thread, we have this skein of Yarn Cafe Creations in the Castle on the Cloud, Castle on a Cloud colorway, which um, makes me think of the song from Les Mis every single time I say the colorway. So I will be singing that in my head for the rest of the podcast. Uh, so it is just really pretty with um, a kind of a turquoise base and some gray in there and then there are purple speckles and this is on her fluffy sock base which is a 7525 very soft and fluffy uh, sock base and then included in that is this generously donated project bag large quilted project bag from Pamela who um, who doesn't have a shop, but she just makes these bags for fun. And it's it's designed to lie flat and and kind of be open so you can um, put lots of stuff in there. It has some neon yellow polka dot uh, interior fabric and then it could um, and then it has a handle here at the top. And so you will get these two prizes for the chatter thread and as I said that will be run with a random number generator and then I'm gonna just go through and as I said probably just pick my favorite pair of socks for a third prize uh, this one has been uh, donated by barmaid knits um, who is fairly local to me. She's up in up north a little bit, and um, she donated this gorgeous skein of um, Earl Grey tea cocktail. All of her colorways are named after different alcoholic beverages, and so this is the Earl Grey tea cocktail, and it is on her drunken sock base, which is a sparkly uh, 75 75 merino, 25% nylon, and 5% gold stellina. And it's this beautiful gray with some blue and purple speckles throughout, and it's, it's really gorgeous. And then included with that, April puts the, uh, the recipe for the cocktail that the drink was, or that the uh, yarn was named after. So you have the recipe for the Earl Grey cocktail included, uh, and it is in this cute little satchel bag and then also included in the prize pack is this drawstring project bag that my aunt Kathy made with all these different woodland creatures on it and it has um, just an orange interior fabric so that will be the uh, third and final prize for the cow so you have as I said a uh, little over a week next uh, next Wednesday next Thursday will be the um, the end of the Cal. That's actually the start of August, or it's actually the start of autumn. I actually should have stopped it on the 20th, but that's okay. So um, you will be entered. Uh, so yeah, you'll have an opportunity to win one of these prizes, and I'm excited to, uh, to get these um, out and and awarded and whatnot. And I do have a basket that I am keeping all future prizes in. So um, if you ever want to have, you know, donate a prize to the, to the podcast as a giveaway, um, you are welcome to contact me and I will um, facilitate that. Uh, I like having, I like giving things away. So, um, so yeah. Anyway. There is, I think, all the administrative things. Um, let's go ahead and get into the knitting. I only have one FO this week, but it is a super cute FO. I finished my mom's pencil and paper socks. Aren't they adorable? So this yarn is from the Yarn Enabler, who is a Canadian dyer. She is also one half of the Die Another Day podcast with um, with the Cozy Knitter, who is also a, an indie dyer. So I will link their podcast down below. 
But um, but she died. She used to set them as uh, separate skeins, where you'd have you know, a pair of pencil socks, and then she did a pair of paper socks. She um, then put them together so you could have one half of each, and I grabbed it at that point because who doesn't need a pencil and paper sock? Uh, these are a g birthday gift from my mom. My mom turned 65 in um, just about two weeks, and uh, so I wanted to send these to her. She's a teacher, and I thought these would be a perfect gift for her. Um, with this paper sock, I did just my basic uh, recipe. It's, you know, it's a stripy sock, so I did my stripy recipe. I did a Turkish cast on, toe up, um, did a true afterthought heel, and then knit up to as long as I did the pencil sock, basically, because the pencil sock was more of a, a, an involved pattern. Uh, and then I did 15 rounds of one-by-one one ribbing and finished off with Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind-off. And, um, yeah, it worked out really nicely. Um, I was going to do, like, a duplicate stitch red up the side. I don't know that I'm going to now. I kind of like the way that it looks just like this. Um, plus, I want to get these shipped off um, with my mom's sweater, which I finished last week and showed you, and my dad's birthday gift. Both my parents' birthdays are just two days apart, and I want to make sure that they get them in plenty of time. Um, and so, yeah. Once I finish a project, I just want it to, like, I want to give it, I want to give it right now. So, anyway, that sock is done, and then with the pencil sock, I followed the pattern that the yarn enabler had written. Um, I wasn't going to, originally, I was just going to kind of wing it, but, um, but I thought, you know what, why not support her completely and purchase her pattern. It's not very expensive. It was only like two dollars. So I purchased the pattern and it's again toe up. Um, I did it with the Turkish cast on. I think the pattern calls for a Judy's Magic 8 cast on, but I don't I don't use that. So I just did Turkish cast on and you can see there's a broken rib going up the pencil, which is, you know, because the pencil is... What is it? O octagonal? I never really counted how many. Anyway, um, so there, it's it's not a, it's not a circle. So this uh, gives you the the corners of the pencil. And then I was going to do a fish lips kiss heel, but I thought, why not just do another afterthought heel? Then then they would match. Um, and so I did a true afterthought heel with this one as well. And then the pattern, um, the. Uh, Lead and wood was a mini skein, so I just started and basically knit. I knit all of the lead, but then I think I, I left a couple, like maybe a gram of wood out because it was long enough. And then, um, and then when I got to the metal band and then the eraser, that was also its own mini and. I ended up knitting the metal part a couple of times because it was too there was too much silver, and I ended up um, it, I, I knit it once following the pattern, and I had like five or six extra rows, so I ripped back and kind of changed the pattern a little bit to accommodate those rows. But when I got to the pink of the eraser, the sock was going to be too long, so I ripped it back. Uh, took out uh, about an inch or so of the of the yellow, um, and then re-knit the silver part, taking out some of the silver. Um, and then I did still have to do some adjustments because I didn't take out quite enough of the silver. And then it goes straight into the pink. And then I just knit 15 rows of the eraser, which used up most of the pink. But I wanted to have the eraser. I don't normally knit 15 rows of ribbing, but um, but I wanted the eraser to to be proportionate. Um, so so yeah, there you have it. Um, it's a very easy pattern to knit, and um, and it's and it's fun. You know, you have a lot of just plain yellow, but um, but it was still really fun to make, and so so I enjoyed it, and I really think that my mom is going to get a kick out of these. And that's the only FO that I have, but I do have a decent amount of whips. So um, let's go ahead and get into those.
We'll start with a continuation of a uh, whip that I had last week, and that is my Sock Blank Socks by Bling Your String, Erin, uh, who is one half of the Knitting with Tiffany, um, no, Knitting at Tiffany's with Added Bling podcast. Uh, she is the brains behind Bling Your String products, which does um, project bags and sock blanks. And I think she does... Um, regular yarn as well, like, you know, sock yarn. But, um, but I had this sock blank, this Kiss and Teal sock blank from her, uh, for a while, and I've wanted to knit it for a while, and so I finally got it started, and I am about an inch from doing the heel. I'm gonna do an afterthought heel. No, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do a fish lips kiss heel, because, um, there's no reason to have extra end. My cat's an idiot. <laughs> there's a, there's a fan in the window, and it's in her way. And so she thought she'd try to jump to the top of the fan uh, so that she could look out the window, but but there's not enough room up there. She just fell on her butt like an idiot. And in true cat fashion, she played it off as if she meant to do that. So now she's going to try to to jump on my bookshelves. Anyway... Uh, so, yeah, so why have extra ends if you don't need them? So I am just going to do a fish lips kiss heel and then continue on. I'm hoping to have this pair done by next podcast. I really need to because I still have two more pairs of socks that I have to knit um, before the end of the month. And while I still have three weeks, what, three and a half weeks before the end of the month, um, which is plenty of time to finish this pair and knit another pair of socks, or another two pairs of socks, I need to get to them because I don't want to be stressing out like I did at the end of August and the end of July. I really need to stop procrastinating. But the problem is, is that I've had a bit of uh, cast-on-itis lately, and um, there's a bunch of things that I want to just make, and so I've been spreading myself out over several projects. Um, I am still working on my oldest daughter's sweater. If you recall, I was knitting her, or I am knitting her, the Flax uh, by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern, and it is a pullover pattern. Um, and it goes from like zero to six months all the way up to like a 4X. So you could knit a Flax for every single person you know, pretty much, and um, and just do it with this one pattern, which is free, which is amazing. So um, I I, <coughs> I had originally intended on knitting one for each of my girls, but um, but I got some bulky yarn for Delaney. And, and flax is knit out of worsted. They do have the Flax Light, which I don't know if that one is free, but that one is designed for um, fingering weight, and. Um, and so anyway, so I'm going to pick a different pattern for Delaney, but, um, but I am knitting it for Tatum. And here is what I have so far. Lots of rolling at the bottom. So I am knitting this out of the leftover Madeline Tosh, uh, Tosh DK that I had in Oceana. And as I said before, this is a worsted weight pattern, but the Tosh DK is... It's a heavy DK, so it's it's kind of like a light worsted. So I made a size bigger in order to um, accommodate for Tatum. Plus, I'm expecting that she will be able to wear this for this winter and hopefully next winter as well. Um, it is coming out a, a good size for her. She's going to have good growing room, and um, and I'm excited about it. I am getting a little bit concerned about having enough yardage because I have this much left of the second skein. I have one full skein, and then... Oh, no, no! No, I guess I started... The second skein was the leftover that I used, because um, it was leftover from my back shore. Um, so I had a partial, a mostal. Uh, so I think I used that as the second skein. So I have two full skeins left, uh, but I'm still... Excuse the cat noises. She sometimes just goes through the house and yells 
for no real reason. She knows I'm in here. I don't know why she does that. She doesn't do it in the middle of the night anymore, which is important, because she did for a little while there, and we didn't sleep. As you can tell, she's pretty loud. Uh, anyway, so I still have um, several more inches of the body left to do. I think I've probably got maybe eight, and I think I have to do 14, um, and then the ribbing, or, yeah, the ribbing. Uh, and then I have the sleeves. Now, I am going to stripe the sleeves with this leftover Malabrigo Rios in apple green. Um, I'll just split this in half and stripe until I run out. Um, so I am hoping that I can get the sleeves long enough. I was intending to make her thumb sleeves, you know, where they're long and she can have a hole for her thumb, but I may not have enough yardage. But anyway, this is a, it's easy, fun, it's just stockinette, you know, and um, at this point, there's nothing exciting about it, so I, I pick it up and put it down. Um, and I took it, took it with me to a meeting yesterday so that I could just sit and knit and not have to pay attention to it. Um, but it will get done. We're still a little bit warm here for a, a wool sweater, um, but we are getting cooler. Um, we've, we've had to, um, we're keeping the windows open at night, but, um, the fan that I just mentioned the cat fell off of, um, has been on all night long every night for the past several months, um, to bring in, it, it's faced out. This is, you know, a room that nobody sleeps in, so it doesn't have to be cool in this room. But we open up the windows in the other bedrooms, and so this pushes out the hot air uh, and then brings in the cool air, and it really makes a difference. You can, it brings in a breeze to each of the other bedrooms. And so um, the past couple of nights we've had to keep it off because it's just been too chilly. Um, so, so yeah, I'm very excited about fall coming, but it hasn't quite come yet. And that project is being kept in my Harry the Chipmunk You So and So bag. Harvey, Harvey the Chipmunk You So and So bag. Uh, which has these beautiful fall leaves on the back. I'm really excited about fall. Oh, and I forgot to mention that my um, my uh, sock is in my bet bag. I won't sing the song this time, but uh, that's my bet bag. And uh, this is also from you so-and-so. Then I have started a baby sweater. I have a friend in Leeds who had her first son um, a couple of months ago, actually, uh, and I have completely failed as a friend and have not knit her a single thing. So um, I figured I needed to get started on the sweater now and get it out to her so that he can hopefully wear it for the winter. Um, and, and I also figured it was a good time um, not only to redeem myself as a friend, but, um, but the Wooly Elephant podcast, which is, um, mother and daughter team Nikki and Heather are having a baby knits cow right now that goes until the end of September. And so I thought I could knit the sweater and, um, and enter it into their cow. So the pattern... The pattern is called Baby Sophisticate by uh, Lyndon Heflin, and um, and I have actually knit this pattern before. I knit it, gosh, seven or eight years ago. Um, no, I get maybe six or seven years ago for a neighbor across the street who was having a baby, and um, and I just always loved the way that it came out, and so I decided to knit it again. It's a very simple kind of old man cardigan. So here's what I've got so far. And I'm sorry, it's dark yarn. Um, and I don't have the best lighting in this room. So you're not going to be able to see it all that well. But here it is. And I am knitting this out of Malabrigo Rios in the, what is it, Cugway colorway? Um, for the body, uh, which, which is very similar to, um, Indecita, but a little bit darker, a little bit less, 
yeah, just a little bit darker, a little bit more severe of a colorway, I think. And then I have done the um, the accents, the edges out of some Rios in Ivy, which is just a really great tonal green, and I think it brings out the green of the Kugue really well. So it doesn't have any buttons yet, and it doesn't have any sleeves yet, as you can see, um, but it is a very simple and easy pattern, and I cast it on over the weekend and got it almost completely done. So I will get the sleeves done in the next day or two. I have one on the needles, um, and then uh, I will probably find some buttons in my stash and get it mailed off to my friend. Um, I like this pattern. I love, I love shawl collars. I hope you can see that. I hope it looks really dark in the screen. Um, but yeah, it's just a really cute little little man sweater. Let's see if I can do a close up. So there is a close up of the yarns together, uh, so you can kind of see that cute gray colorway, and then the ivy and how well it's working together. I really like kind of matching non-obvious pairs, colors together. Um, you know, you would look at this and you would automatically go with purple, but I like, I like pulling out the little bits of green. And it gave me an opportunity to use this little leftover ivy that I'd had from, um, oh, I made it... I used part of it for a hat and fingerless gloves for my cousin that I gave to her at Christmas last year, and then I used part of it for a brioche hat that I made um, earlier this year, and so I've gotten a lot of use out of that single, or the, I got, there was two skeins, two skeins of ivy um, that, I, that I bought last December, so... And then the Kugwe has been sitting in my stash for quite a long time, so it's it's nice to to stash dive and be able to um, pull up something that's really going to work and then use up leftovers. I love using up leftovers. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I um, when I have a, a high quality yarn and I have you know twenty, thirty, forty grams left over, I don't want to get rid of that because I paid for a full skein, and I figure I might use it eventually. So I have like these little bags where I just keep leftovers in, and it's so great to finally find a reason to pull those out and use them up. I just absolutely love that. It, it makes my slight OCD tendencies just sing. Finally, <clears throat> I have... Oh, my head hurts. I have a headache, is what I have. Ugh. I have a pair of fingerless gloves that, um, like with the Baby Sophisticate, I have knit this pattern before. I kind of recently went through um, some of my old projects. I just do that sometimes. And um, I was just looking through my project page. And there's lots of patterns that I've made that I loved making, or I always that I found really fun or ingeniously written and... Um, and I don't have the finished object anymore because I gave it away or because there, it's just old. And so um, so sometimes it's fun to go back and, and re-knit these items. Uh, so this is one of those uh, one of those times. I knit this probably 2000, between 2009 and 2011, somewhere in there. And it is the... It is the October Leaves Fingerless Knit Mitts by Abby Tilden. And I have one almost completely done. I just need a thumb, as you can see. Now, this is such a fun pattern. It's, it's very basic, but it has this nice cable that runs along um, the outside of the hand. And then it has this cable, which is similar which is exactly the same, actually, that runs along this side of the hand. And what I love about this pattern so much is that the thumb gusset is done ingeniously with these leaves that go around the thumb. Let me see if I can get a better picture of that for you. You know what? I'm, I'm going to post a picture 
of the uh, the thumb gusset. But it just it's really lovely how it um, using yarn overs and whatnot you create the thumb gusset and um, and it's just these beautiful leaves. So. Um, I absolutely loved this pattern when I made it the first time. Uh, I don't know what happened to those mitts. I I don't have them anymore. So um, they either got lost. Some some of my knitting has lived permanently in my parents' RV because um, it was stuff that we didn't need to wear at home. But when we would go camping, we could use it. Um, some of it just died. Uh, I wore it too much and it and it died. Some of it just got lost. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't have those gloves anymore. So I decided to knit another pair and I've made this one uh, quite a bit higher on the hands. The last pair I, I finished here because I didn't like not having my fingers completely out. However, here in Colorado where winter is a real thing, um, I need the extra warmth and so I have um, knit it up to cover most of my fingers so I'll still be able to use them to drive um, but they will keep me nice and warm on those cold days and I have knit this out of one of my prizes um, from the um, the basket that I won for the yarn crawl the yarn across along yarn along the Rockies yarn crawl that I got I won the Wooly Knits, Wooly Works Yarn, Wooly Works Knit Shop uh, basket. Uh, and so I won, part of the basket was a skein of Mirasol Nuna, Nuna, Nuna yarn in, um, in this just lovely red. I've, it's, it's got a number, it's like 1065, 1062. Uh, but I was looking online and apparently it, the colorway is called Cherry Bomb which then makes me think of um, of that 80s song, Ch -ch 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 Cherry Bomb. But uh, anyway, <laughs> so I am using up, I'll use up almost all of this skein. Um, the, the pattern says that it's going to take 220 yards, but this is only um, 191 yards, and I didn't use half of it to do this, and I won't. I used like 20 grams, um, so I won't use another 5 grams to do the thumb. So I have plenty left over to make the second glove. And uh, and yeah, I'm excited about these. The yarn is 40% uh, merino, 40% silk, and 20% rayon from bamboo, um, which gives which makes it strong and warm and kind of shiny. Um, I will say that the finished object is not as shiny as it is in the skein, but uh, but it is really soft and comfortable and um, yeah, I think these are going to get lots and lots of use this winter. So I will probably have these ones done um, next week as well because I started this yesterday <laughs> and yesterday afternoon after getting home from school with my daughter. Um, and I got the first one almost completely done. So, so yeah, so that, that, that's all that I have knit, or the, that all that I'm working on. Um, as you can see, there's a lot. I just really feel like I want to start all kinds of things. Um, I'm just excited. I want, there's several hats that I want to start, and, um, and I want to knit a sweater for myself. Uh, do you recall last week when I was showing you the um, Lolo Did It sweater quantity that I had gotten in Look at the Flowers, Lizzie? Um, I'll post a picture here. I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and knit that into a flax sweater for myself. Um, I'm excited about that, so that's going to be cast on here pretty soon. Um, I have my pavement sweater that I was going to start working on. Um, I haven't. Um, I, I may end up just waiting and letting that that sit um, until the weather gets warmer because we're going into fall and then we're going to go into winter and I am not going to need um, that lightweight mostly cotton pavement sweater. Um, that's something that I'm going to need for like the summer. So um, I want to knit the sweaters that are going to keep me warm. Uh, so yeah, so I will probably um, put that aside 
for a while longer and um, and knit some other sweaters. But first, I have to knit the sweaters for my kids. Um, Tatum is asking, Mom, have you finished my sweater yet? Have you finished my sweater yet? She still can't wear it, as I said. It's still too warm, but um, but she's excited. And I like that she's excited. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and get into yarn haul. Uh, I do have some yarn to haul. Thankfully, though, I don't have quite as much as I've had in the past two weeks. But, uh, but I do have some, so uh, let's talk about it. First, I have a skein from Lolo Did It. She has uh, released her uh, next Hippo for the Holidays colorway, which is Hippo for Halloween. And if I'm honest, it's probably the one that I've been waiting for the most all year. So here is the Hippo for the Hollow Hippo for Halloween colorway. It has um, great purple and acid green and orange. I love that orange speckles. Um, and uh, I'm super duper excited about this colorway. These are going to be socks for me, and I will probably make a hat out of the leftovers as well. I love Halloween colorways. And then I got a skein of troll hair. Uh, in a little Lolo, which is really bright uh, for heels, toes, and cuffs. So you should see these uh, pretty soon. I will, of course, be knitting the um, Hippo for Dia de los Muertes first, um, but Hippo for Halloween will come very shortly afterwards. And I think... I think there's only one more Hippo for the Holidays colorway that I have to get. I think she's doing a Hippo for Thanksgiving um, and then Hippo for Christmas, but I always ha already have Hippo for Christmas. Uh, I bought it last year, and so, so yeah, there's only one more, and then I will have done the entirety of her Hippo for the Holidays for the year, and it's a little bittersweet that it's coming to the end. But, uh, but it has been fun, and um, I have enjoyed all my hippo um, skeins, and yeah, yeah. Uh, next, I have yarns that I picked up on sale at Etsy. Etsy had a sale recently for Labor Day. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that works, because... Not all the shops on Etsy were on sale, um, but some were. And so I picked up these two skeins from Jelly Beans Yarns, which uh, is a UK-based dyer. Uh, the first one I have is Ice Cream Sunday, which has great purples and a little bit of browns in there, some speckles and whatnot. And I think I'm going to knit this for my mom. This is a very mom colorway. Uh, there's even a little bit of blue in there and some pink. And then um, I basically just got that so that this skein wouldn't have to travel alone. And that is iridescent. Uh, and it has just all the colors. Just all the colors in there and they run together very well. I love skeins like this. I really need to learn how this dye process is done because... I just love how there are so many colors and they just kind of run into each other. They fade in very well. So um, these will be socks for me. I have no experience with this yarn dyer, so um, it'll be a new experience for me, but I did really like the colors that she had. Um, I will, of course, link her shop down below, as I do with all of my yarn haul items. Next, I have some non-yarny items. Uh, first is something from Knitty by Nature which I had never purchased before, uh, purchased from before, but uh, I will definitely be purchasing from again. Um, I got these. I know you can't see this. I'll post a picture. But there is a, um, a Progress Keeper holder, uh, which I can put all my Progress Keepers on, and then I got these fall-inspired Progress Keepers. There is a skeleton, there is a pumpkin, and there are these mittens, which is more winter than fall. But um, but yeah, I'm excited to use these, and I'm excited to put all my Progress Keepers in, on this uh, thingy, and then I can keep it on a bag or whatever. 
but they're super cute and um, and yeah and I've actually had that for several weeks but um, I kept forgetting about it because I didn't keep it with my yarn I just had it on my bookshelf so I apologize for not showing that earlier and then next I got this because I was watching the girls in the yarn cafe their podcast and they had gotten bags from this bag maker and I fell in love uh, so this is from Laughing Stitches. Oh, look at this bag, guys. It's Woodland Creatures. It's fall. It says socks. It has a charm that says made with love. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't pass this up. So I picked up this bag. It's, it's a sock bag um, with uh, this kind of cool tan paisley fabric on the inside. Uh, it's drawstring with um, measuring tape ribbon and it says socks and I yeah I absolutely love it I absolutely love it um, it's also got uh, a place to keep a progress keeper um, right there and there's another made with love progress keeper that is attached uh, so yeah very well made laughing stitches I will link this down below as well I have been waiting. I've had this almost a week and I've been waiting so patiently for um, for today to come so that I could talk about it on the podcast so I can use it for my projects. So I'm going to put my glove project right in there and now I'm ready to go. And then lastly, I picked up some yarn on a D-stash. Um, this, uh, this gal had um, this yarn at a very reasonable price, and so I picked it up. It is uh, Wollmeise, which is a German dyed yarn, and um, Wollmeise used to be hugely popular and hard to get when I first started coming around on Ravelry. Um, you could purchase the skeins from Germany, through the update if you were very quick and stayed up until 3 a.m. because I think that was with the time difference that was when they the updates would happen and everything would sell out in moments and so people would um, buy skeins on D-Stash um, for ridiculously high prices uh, this you, know, you could buy the yarn from Germany for like $29, but you would buy it on a D-stash for $40 because it was so hard to get a hold of. Now, however, it's a lot easier to get a hold of, and uh, American companies are selling it. Well, uh, the Loopy U is selling it. I don't know if anybody else is. Um, and people have gotten a bunch of it, and so you can find it on D-stash a lot cheaper. Um, and I even think that the... The updates are happening, or maybe they have stuff on in their shop at all times now. Because I've been able to shop during the day um, in years past and and gotten skeins of yarn. Um, and the for, uh, currency exchange is in our favor at this point. So you, I think you can get a skein from from their shop for like twenty seven dollars. Um, now and um and yeah and and her put-ups are, are pretty large so i got these two skeins which is in her 100 percent um merino she has um 80 20 twin and 100 percent merino and these skeins are large they're 575 yards which is significant the uh the 80 20 10 is 525 and um Oh, yeah, okay, so I was starting to freak out there a little bit because it says 383 yards, and I'm like, no, because these are 150 grams, and um, and there's no way that this would be 383 yards at 150 grams, but I'm looking at 100 grams equals 383 yards, so yeah, like 575 yards. Anyway, so um, I got this one, which is my... Mas Jung, uh, which is just this beautiful gray, and this one, which is Hers Blut, which is just the perfect red ever. It's such a true, gorgeous red. And um, 
I'm not entirely sure what I have intended for these. The de-stash price was ridiculous. Way too good for me to pass up. So um, I went ahead and grabbed them. But um, I may, they're great for color work. Uh, they're great for socks. Um, I may use them for heels and toes. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I wanted to show them to you together, and I saved them for the last of my yarn haul because I also wanted to show you... Um, a previous project that I had made that I made with two skeins of Wilmiza Twin or Wilmiza 100%. So, um, so I could put these together to make this top. So back in 2012, I made the Elf shirt by Astrid Schram, and I made it out of two skeins of Wilmiza 100%. Um, Wilmiza Pure. And you might think that that is impossible, because I'm a big girl, and this is two skeins of fingering weight yarn. But, uh, but this pattern is written for that. So this is the elf. Um, and you can see that it is kind of, kind of gradient striped. Uh, and I made it out of a skein of Turkis, Turkis Marquis, and Vamp, which is another gorgeous red. Um, and this blue is probably my favorite of her blue colorways. And, um, and it's very simple. It's, it's knit in one piece. Uh, there is no ribbing. There is just that it's meant to kind of roll at the end. Oh, I think this, this has got a bit of a garter stitch edging. But uh, the sleeves and the neck are just designed to roll. And, um, and you just knit stripes and your stripes change by one row each time and then you it um you know it it's a mirror image so um super fun super easy the stripes make it go really quickly and it's super fun as i said um and yeah two skeins so even if you bought the volmiza at full price from their shop you could knit this for just a little bit over $50. How many times can you say you can get a sweater out of $50 worth of high quality indie dyed yarn? Yeah. So um, I had a lot of fun knitting this and I didn't even use the full skeins. I used 85%. So um, just under 500 yards of each, 480, 490 yards of each skein. And um, I'm thinking about using this to knit another one. Um, I haven't quite decided. I did enjoy that one, and I do like wearing it. Um, there are some changes that I would make to it. Um, make th The armholes are a little bit snug, um, and so I would like to kind of adjust that. But I made it when it was brand new, the pattern, and so... Um, so it would be good to kind of see what adjustments the, the designer has made to update it and then um, what um, other people have done to kind of improve on the pattern and whatnot. So, um, so that is a previously uh, finished item. Uh, and that is the end of my yarn haul. And so I guess we'll talk about reading Sorry if I seem a little discombobulated this week. I was really excited about podcasting, but I have developed a headache. And it is making me uncomfortable. So I am still working my way through the, um, the Chaos Walking trilogy. I am now about halfway into the third book, which is Monsters of Men. And... Oh my goodness, guys. Really, you should read this series. I am so impressed with it. Um, the first book is The Knife of Never Letting Go, and it is the story of Todd, who lives in Prentice Town, um, which is filled with only men because there was a virus um, in Prentice Town that killed off the women, and it made it so that the men could hear each other's thoughts, so they could also hear the thoughts of all the animals. And... Um, and it has caused problems. So um, Todd has kind of discovered 
some of these problems and he has to go on an adventure and it is really really well done and I've if you are any way interested in audiobooks, and I would highly recommend these on audio because they're fantastic. Uh, so The Knife of Never Letting Go, and then The Ask and the Answer, and then Of Monsters, or Monsters of Men. And, um, and there are some, uh, uh, some little short stories that go in between. There is a prequel short story called New World, and then in between the second and the third book there is one called the wide wide sea and then there is one that comes after the finish of this called snowscape which comes at the end so i'm sure it's like probably like a an epilogue but i have really really loved this whole series i have given i gave the first two books five stars uh the short stories have each gotten four stars and um yeah, I've just been really, really impressed with this. So, highly, highly recommend this series. And then I finished Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Um, and I finished it just in time for my book club, which was this weekend. And, um, and I was really impressed with that one as well. She's the lady who also wrote The Girl on the Train, which got such such hubbub about it um, in the past couple of years. And they made it into a movie last year. Um, I was not a massive fan of The Girl on the Train. It was okay, but, um, but it didn't really impress me very much. However, I really liked Into the Water quite a lot more. So um, I wonder if it's because I've always been enamored by uh, English country towns um, and this is built around... Uh, that kind of environment um, and Girl on the Train is more London um, so so I don't know if that's what drew me to it but I just really liked this book better I liked the characters I got completely caught in to the story and I love the way that she makes it so that you you start out with these impressions about all the characters and as the story goes on she reveals more and more about each character and almost completely with every single character did my impressions change my opinion of them changed completely with almost every single one of them um as the story went on and so yeah that was that was kind of cool I enjoyed that quite a lot. I read that one half and half. Like I partially read it in physical form and then I would listen to it when I couldn't read the physical book. Um, and I did that so that I could get it finished in time. Um, but the audiobook was done very well as well. It's one of those um, ones that has several cast members. And um, and so, yeah, you had a different different voice for each character. Uh, the the chapters had different POVs, points of view, and so you um, had different actors for each of the different POVs, which is always nice. And we are now coming into October, which means it's time for all the scary books, all the thrillers, all the horror books. And I have been waiting on this uh, middle grade series for a while. I've had it most of the year, and I've been waiting until now to be able to read it. I, um, I read all different genres and all different age groups. Um, I love middle grade, I love children's books, I love YA, and I love adults. So, um, so you will see all different kinds of age groups in my reading. Um, but this is the... <clears throat> I don't know what... This is the Shadow House series by Dan Pablocki. And here are the three books. Uh, the first one is called The Gathering. And, um, and it's got, they all have these kind of horror um, covers. So, um, so I haven't even read the back. I just know that this is going to be a horror s series and I wanted to read it. So I've got The Gathering. And then next is You Can't Hide. And then this one just came out this month, and it is called No Way Out. And it has, ooh, isn't she pretty? So, um, so yeah, I am going to be starting these 
uh, here in the next day or two, and I'm excited about them. They, I don't expect that they're going to give me nightmares. I mean, it's not Stephen King, but um, but I do like I I really do like middle grade horror because it's it's still creepy without making it so that you can't ever sleep again. So um, that is the next thing that I'm planning on getting into. Those should read pretty fast. Um, they're not very long, and middle grade is easier to read, let's be honest. Okay, guys, I think that that is it. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I'm going to clean up all of my knitting mess and, um, and then go down and have some lunch. And I will definitely get this podcast up on time. I do apologize for last week's um, lateness. So there you have it. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday and happy knitting. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.